For more on the crisis in Ukraine, we're joined by Ivan Ilan. He's a senior fellow and director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at Independent Institute. Ivan, how volatile is this situation in Ukraine? Is this country on the brink of civil war? Well, it could be. I mean, it, this really sets up a big problem for the government because I, these Russian groups are are uh, probably orchestrated. They look like uh, professional soldiers or militia that have been trained by the Russians. And I think the Russians are trying to put the government in Ukraine in a position of where they either have to take over by force, harming Ukrainians and bringing Russia in, or just watch their eastern part of their country drift off, uh, you know, out of central control. So, so you don't think these are just pro-Russian ordinary protesters? These well, it's hard to tell, but uh, from what it looks like, they've been trained. Some of them even said they're trained and armed from Russia. So are they pointing to the Russian flag and that sort of thing? So the government of Ukraine has accused Moscow of orchestrating the violence and being behind it. What do you make of that? Well, it may be true. I mean, that's what happened in Crimea, the same situation. That's mm -hmm. why people are wondering if the same thing is going to happen to southeast Ukraine, because they took over uh, buildings and that sort of thing. And then the Russians went in, uh, as many countries have, including the U.S. in the past, to help you know protect their own mm -hmm. Russian-speaking citizens or Russian active Russians that are there. So what do you think Russia's end game here is? What, what, is, what does Russia want? Well, it's hard to tell whether they're going to snap off southeast Ukraine like they did uh, Crimea or whether they just want to destabilize the situation and let the government in uh, Kiev know that, you know, they can do that. And they really want uh, influence over Ukraine. Remember, this is – Putin has done this out of weakness because he had a uh, – he – NATO has pushed east and it, he's really only got a semi-friendly government in Belarus and he had a semi-friendly government in the Ukraine and, of course, that was overthrown. Mm -hmm. And now the new government in Ukraine is hostile. So he, he's trying to get – salvage what he can out of Ukraine and maintain influence over – as much influence over the country as he can. How badly do you think this crisis has damaged the relationship between Putin and the West? Well, I think it's damaged it. Uh, in the long run, I think they'll probably, uh, you know, be a, it'll be a bump in the road, but a pretty severe bump in the road. I think it'll all go back to cooperating on certain things and not cooperating on other things. You know, they cooperated on strategic arms control on Afghanistan and that sort of thing, and on uh, uh, you know, wariness about China. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that that will continue in the future. But of course, this has uh, damaged the relationships in the short and medium term, probably uh, fairly severely. So what do you think is the responsibility of the international community in this crisis? What should the international community be doing? Well, we have a system uh, in 19, since 1945 of national sovereignty. Now, some of the big powers like the U.S. and Russia don't always uh, honor lie. that, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's important that we that we do. And so I think Russia is um, in the wrong here, but because it has gone into another country. Now, of course, we do have Russians and Russian speakers in the Ukraine who feel estranged from their government. And, they, and then some of them probably do don't uh, don't feel that they're, you know, they should be there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the Crimeans probably want to be with Russia, southeastern Ukraine. Not as much, but they, some of them still want to be part of Russia. So you have the problem of self-determination versus sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the rub here. And, and those two uh, things usually collide with each other. Right. And the great powers always take uh, their interests. So like one time they're on the side of uh, sovereignty and the other time they're on the side of, uh, you know, uh, self-determination mm -hmm. or self-determination as they want to see it. Now, of course, NATO and Russia were on opposite taking the opposite positions over Kosovo. Uh, the NATO wanted to pull Kosovo away from Serbia, and of course, Serbia was a Russian ally in the late 90s. Now we're kind of reversed there. Yep. Thank you so much. Ivan Ilan, he's a senior fellow and director, Center on Peace and Liberty, the Independent Institute. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.